I'm Eric. And I'm Spicy Ike. And you're listening to Just Cool Enough or watching it. And for some stupid reason, uh, they decided to do this this hot wing thing. I don't know. We're just I, we didn't really talk about what it, this is. We're just going to eat hot wings and do the show and see what I happens. I don't know either. This was up to like last week after we got done with the episode. I was like, Ike, you figure it out. And then Ike sent us a message and he was like, go buy some wings. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll buy some wings. So and now we're here. So. So Ike, you know, this is you. This is you planning yeah, it. No, I, I, I had some, I have questions I could ask if you wanted to do an interview style or we could just do our regular show and like kind of eat Ike, things. Ike, this is your go. show. This is the this, Ike this production. Is my, yeah, this is the, well, so what I want to know first then is, is we all have wings. Yes. Um, so, so I guess starting with Joe, what are we, what are we looking at here? What's not, because I know that we all have different wings from different places. So I immediately regretted my wing selection but because uh, I went to Buffalo Wild Wings and I, chose poorly sir I, I i chose boneless wings like a like, like, like a chump and i mean I, I did it out of pure just because it was going to be easy well, and i didn't want to get slop all over my keyboard they're less healthy because they're because they're breaded so they're not less they're not as good for Wait, you what? but yeah yeah so yeah it's, it's basically like little chopped up i've never had boneless wings before so this is like it's, chopped up it's, chicken it's tenders. just mini chicken tenders yeah, yeah. so it's bullshit so basically bullshit and so i was very disappointed by that but i had to you know come anyway i picked up the order and uh i got a parm the mild my mild choice was parmesan garlic my mm. medium choice is a dry rub buffalo and my hot choice is habanero mango which is not hot it's beyond hot it's like the absurd flavor the mega oh, flavor yeah. i don't know but well yeah, we, so we, those are my three we were talking about before the show how we uh, abhor or uh, are appalled by rubs and that we decided I, I had been offered from the place that I went to get garlic parm, uh, but I said I wanted something with a little spice. So everything I have is spicy because I didn't want to start off with no spice. Oh, okay, that's yeah. But I, I will off say like, no spice. Your, your, gar your, your garlic parmesan, though, is one of my favorites when I do go to Buffalo Wild Wings. So you're going to be you're going to like that. I'm, I'm a newbie. Like when it comes to Buffalo Wild Wings or just wings in general, I really don't eat them a lot. Clearly, uh, I, I would have picked bone in wings because I just I feel like that's what like when my friends like when I was like first started, like we would get Wingstop because we would go meet up Wednesday nights, get high and get Wingstop or Popeyes. But we like we like the one of the first nights. They're like, let's go to Wingstop. And I was like, I don't. I don't think I like wings, but whatever. I showed up and I, I realized at Wingstop you can get boneless wings and you can also get chicken tenders. I was like, oh. And it's the same flavors and stuff like that. It's just like, I was like, oh, then yes, obviously, yes. This, I love this then. Well, I wish it was like a full chicken, chicken tender, not just like some scraggly little like chicken. Like it's like Bite. a fake ass chicken nugget. I'd rather yeah, have a it's chicken. Like a, yeah, it's like, a lopsided chicken nugget. <laughs> yeah. And like you get one part that's like super breaded. And I, I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm here for the spice. So. <laughs> uh, and and uh, Eric, what do, we, what do we got on the plate okay. over there? So I didn't realize the amount of wings, but luckily I had to order more so for my sister and she didn't eat all hers because I ordered her more, a bigger thing. So I'm starting off with the mild uh which which is the mild chicken tender from from her and then my uh my my two choices are the same i had last week i got mango habanero is my my next which is a big jump from mild uh and then bad. and then atomic which is their hottest see mango habanero was what was the hottest one that they offered at my place so that was like my my final frontier yeah. <laughs> when it comes to wings so ike what are you doing what's your um, what, what is your wing so garage the, look like the place that i went to is a, a local joint called um bone uh boneheads and uh they uh they have specialized in like really weird flavors um you know uh breakfast is Tiffany, tiffany's which is uh i think it's a uh, syrup tastes like with sausage bacon, with bacon on it and like they douse it uh they have like a s'mores where they dip it in chocolate and put a little um like marshmallow on the outside uh, but I told them I was talking to the guy. I was like, "Listen, I, I'm, I need some help on where to go with it. Um, I'm looking for a kind of a mild, medium, and hot." And so he's like, "Well, the hottest one we have on the list is called Hell's Bells." So I was like, "Sure, I'll take I'll take that." Uh, and then he was like, "A good middle of the road. There's one um, that's that that they call uh, going uh, going the wrong way. No, uh, on the wrong side of the road. That's what it is. On the wrong side of the road, which is kind of the it's a it's supposed to be kind of a spicy, sweet, and sour sauce." Um, and then we, we talked a little bit about uh, garlic parmesan, but I said I want a little spice. And so he's like, well, we go go buffalo. But I'm like, yeah, I mean, like, I want something a little different. So he ended up introducing me to uh, Country Roads, which is um, 
I think it's a, a honey, a honey sriracha. So interesting. So the I, I I like that you went like with the the local pick. Like I I went I was trying to get like a, a like something like somebody could eat along with us, like the just cool enough eat along, <laughs> so people can like. And I think between. Ike or between Eric and I, like we have like the local or like the national brands, like because yeah, yeah, there's definitely. A, yeah, like those wing stop, Buffalo Wild Wings, those are everywhere. I mean, I so would have gotten along with us. There's a there's a local joint uh, that that opened up not far from me, but I think they're closed because of co. I don't know. I don't think it's a big brand. I didn't see like maybe it's a franchise. It looks like it's a franchise, but a franchise that I'd never seen before. So I but I think they might not be open right now. So I was like, I don't know, and also I don't want to leave the house. I did have a thing where. I like so like I got nervous because I'm not like super spicy food guy I like buffalo is not gonna be a problem for me and I eat like Indian and Thai food but like Americanized right like I always order like medium or medium plus and medium plus is kind of pushing it for me so like I, I got nervous when I was like oh my god I have habanero I don't I don't think I've ever had a habanero pepper so I got scared and because I got I ended up, stop, I was like, where do I go to get milk on the run? And I'm trying to think, like, where do you get milk on the run? I don't know. There's no place to get milk on the run. So what I did is I stopped at McDonald's, and I got a bunch of jugs, jugs of child's milk here. And I also just, got some That sounds milk. wrong. It's jugs of milk that are for children, not jugs of children milk. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, it could be child milk. So anyway, like, um, the, these, these milk jugs... It says glug glug on them. I, I, uh, anyway, so I got a bunch of them and I pulled up to the drive thru. I'm like, oh shit, what do you do in the drive thru? Are you supposed to wear a mask? Like, what's the etiquette? So I put a mask on and yeah. I'm like sitting there, like fumbling with it like a jackass, like, uh, 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 put the mask on. And, uh, the lady's like, are you the guy that ordered all the milk? I'm like, yes. And like, here's my credit card. Here's your $12 for like six tiny ass milk. I'm like, where's all the children in his car? I don't know. <laughs> I know. Right. Like you can tell, like, like they gave me a bunch of straws. Like they gave me a ton of straws. <laughs> and they're like, like for the guy party really- that you're bringing the milk back to. Yeah, the the milk nope, it's all for me. So I got scared. Cause I was like, I need some of that stuff in the milk that kills the, the heat. So just in case, yeah, I don't know. It's gonna sit out for an hour, but I'm still gonna drink it. I don't care. Well, let's let's pull the trigger and, and eat the first eat the first right, mildly right. first, the mild first wing. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Yeah, this is weird eating on camera. Do I just pull the whole thing in my mouth, or do I like mm-hmm. lick the tip a little bit? Well, <laughs> it depends whether or not we want to put this on our fans only. Yeah, you lick the tip and then you and then you stick it as far back as you can. Oh god, Big these are on. so salty. Okay. Hey, editor, cut all the chewing out. This is gross. <laughs> no, no, no. Leave it in. Um, so now what's your, initial, what's your initial take on your... I know Eric's, Eric's is Buffalo. What do you got? I mean, it's just Buffalo, but you like it? Is it? It's like... Um, it's fine. It's barely any heat. So it's, it's, I, it's the mild. Yeah. So like I, I put sriracha on a lot of things, so it's... It's not crazy. Joe's already hitting the water and he's on the I, uh, garlic parm. I met, I made a little miscalculation because I used the same fork to get everything. <laughs> uh, so it had so a little I bit got, of heat from left I got a little something bit of, else? Yeah, I did. I get a little bit of heat on it. But like the garlic parm was, the first thing that hit me was really fucking salty. Mm. Like gross amount of salt. So uh, I'm already giving the garlic parm a big thumbs down from Buffalo Wild Wings. Like, come on, like... They're, 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 you could do yeah. better, Buffalo Wild Wings. The That's mild, disgusting. The mild, it's, it's. I mean, it tastes like kind of like a, a really light buffalo. I don't know. Maybe this one was just not heavily done. But, like, my sister, who, like, used to, like, hate spicy stuff, like, started making, like, buffalo chicken stuff. And, like, hers is always, like, a little spicier than this. So, like, I'm like, oh, I mean, it's fine. Yeah. This doesn't even register on the spicy thing. Like, it has, like, the spice of, like, some pepper. Uh, some fresh pepper, fresh cracked pepper, but it's it, the most overpowering pepper, pepper. thing is just salty, gross. It's not not a good taste, not a good taste. So thumbs two thumbs down. Mah, mah. Ike, how's yours flavor going um, over there? Are you so in my, flavor Mine's yet? a little bit hotter than a buffalo for me. I've I've had something like buffalo, you know, buffalo chicken wraps, and they're fine. This is a little bit hotter than that. I tried this like. It was the only one that I tried before. Like I didn't eat one of the wings, but like I had finished like putting them out and I like licked my fingers on this one before we started. So I expect a little bit of heat, but it is now that I've heaten the whole thing. It definitely has a little more heat than a, than a regular buffalo sauce. Yeah. But 
my, it's pretty good though. Case, like a home ec class made these. Like like it was like their first wings. It was it just really slathered like, on the the salty. Yeah. It is. It's just kind of right, well, gooey, kind of gross. I am not not impressed. But I'm I have high hopes for the buffalo dry one that it might be okay. And if not, I have blue cheese and ranch because I'm from the Midwest, so of course I have ranch and blue cheese. And also, uh, what can I say? They gave me a bag, a, se- a, su- a sweaty bag of, uh, of vegetables. Yeah, you got to keep them fresh. <laughs> Which, I mean, clearly, clearly I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to Buffalo Wild Wings. Is this focusing? Focus, please, camera. <laughs> So, so my my other question for you guys, and I'm gonna get another wing here in a second. Same same level of heat because I get, I think we all have seven wings, and we have to get through them all. Okay. Um, but my my next question for the both of you is: I know that I've talked to you guys in the past about how you got started back in the day at Wow Radio. Like what? But like, I guess the other quick question that I wanted to, to kind of kind of couple with that that I don't think I've ever asked you guys is: what made you decide in the first place that podcasting seemed like a good idea to you? Ooh. Um. I like I remember I um because I did a lot of theater in high school and stuff uh and I I remember I I just started playing World of Warcraft uh because uh like I think my dad gave me a gift card for Amazon or something for my birthday uh so I bought World of Warcraft in a free month and I like got really into it and then BlizzCon happened and I watched uh the WoW radio stuff and I was like these guys are great and then they were like looking for people but at the time like I didn't have any friends like all my friends from high school moved uh to college and i like and then we moved like just like one town over so i didn't know anybody i lived with and it was like a a lot of like young families so i didn't like there weren't kids my age so i was just at home playing world of warcraft with no friends so i i initially started wow radio stuff like when they were like we're just looking for people i was just like i think these people do fun stuff and i would love to be a part of it i didn't even have any plans to do a podcast i was actually forced into podcasting i my i like I didn't like I didn't want to host my own show. Uh they like they made me do it. Um and then eventually I started doing uh doing it more and more and more. But I think like a lot of it was cuz I was I didn't have any friends. Uh I put on a bunch of weight after high school and I just felt like garbage and I didn't want like I didn't think I I deserved any of the the I was like I'm not good at this. Um so I was I was actually forced into it. And then I started enjoying the production side of it and doing it and getting better at it. Wow. So you got like a whole thing that happened. <laughs> what about you, Joe? Well, I was going to ask a follow-up question to Eric. Like, it wasn't anything that was like, you, were, you weren't like, oh, man, I just, I love broadcasting. Were you in like any clubs or anything like that? No, in, I, was uh, in, I was in high school theater. I did, I did plays and stuff. And I did think like, oh, I want to be like an actor or something like that. But like, actor. I, lived, I, I lived in Northern California, which is, might as well be on the, I mean, might as well be as far away from, from Hollywood as, as Michigan or Rhode Island. So it's like, I don't fucking, like, how, how do I even get there? Like, what do I even do? I like, and, and but I, I remember I had a, when I was in WoW Radio, I had this idea that like I would get a job in QA in, in Blizzard and then like like work the night shift and like live in Irvine and then like drive to L.A. in the days for auditions and stuff like that. Like that was my, oh my plan. Gosh. Uh, but yeah, the, the plan was always to get to Los Angeles. That's interesting. Oh, man. Uh, so for me, I, like I started listening to podcasts uh, because I got an office job. And I was looking for things that I can listen to throughout the day that would kind of give me a like daily news updates. And so um, I was on CNET.com and I saw that they had like a show that was happening every day called Buzz Out Loud. And I was really excited by that show. Um, And also, so like that was like a tech news show hosted by a guy named Tom Merritt and a woman named... Uh, Molly Wood. And I follow both of these guys today. Like, actually, you can hear Molly Wood on uh, Marketplace, like, and, and she does her own, own podcast called Make Me Smart with Kyle Rizdahl. And then also, um, Tom Merritt is, now has moved multiple places, and I followed him too. And he does a show called Daily Tech News Show. And uh, so, yeah, like, both of those, like, those people, like, inspired me uh, to to start podcasting. And then, I was listening to tech news and I'm like, you know, what else is out there? And I found these like really fun gaming shows and everything. And then I kind of stumbled over, uh, I just searched world of Warcraft podcast and found WC radio. And that's how I found WC radio. 
But even before then, I was making my own show called, uh, I don't even want to say the name of the show, but like I was making my own tech show, kind of copying Tom Merritt and, uh, and also Leo Laporte uh, with This Week in Tech too. So like, I, but even before then, I was always involved with like production, but it was more video production through like high school and middle school. Like I, I went to like TV stations and I just really liked the whole broadcast, everything. Uh, there's a little like school, uh, not a little school, there's a school around here that's broad, that specializes in broadcast arts that I was going to go to, but like the tuition was too high. And I was like, you know what? I can actually just be like a, a corporate, like businessy guy and like podcast on the side and get my itch. And that's kind of where I am now. And now I'm kind of taking it more seriously with the Joe Q Car Show. Joe Q Star, Joe Q Car Show dot com. Please, you know, like and subscribe. But like, yeah, like, uh, and now that I'm kind of taking it seriously there, like it really is scratching the itch and making me really excited about the whole thing. Um, not that Just Cool Enough doesn't matter, but like, you know, Just Cool Enough has, it's it's its own thing. So um I'm just excited with, with like, you, you're kind of making me think about things I have never thought about, Ike. Like, it's, it's interesting to think like that was 12 plus years ago, maybe longer. Yeah, that's the crazy thing about it, just how old we are and how long. Yeah, right? Like, what? So, I was like, thinking, how did you get? I, I, yeah, I was thinking like, like, because Tom Merritt and all of this, I was like, I remember I watched Tech TV and like, I was like, I was like, I, yeah, I remember all of these names. Yeah, exactly. So like, uh, I, I mean, like for me, like the, the like, it, it's funny because like I actually would like search up these guys. There was a show called like Nerd Blurb and Orange Lounge Radio. And some of these shows are still going. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I would love to do like a, I don't know, not, not a victory lap, but like just like a, a tour of the neighborhood. And um, even like podcast awards, like do you guys remember we were like runners up? Mm -hmm. Just cool enough. The show was like yeah. runners up for podcast awards in some year. And, um, like I, I was looking back through, uh, old podcast award archives and like, oh my gosh, like that, w as far as like the explosion of the podcast industry, it's, it's really been a, an interesting ride. So yeah, we, when uh, we first launched this show, we were like new and noteworthy for like the first three months of the show, which was insane <laughs> at the time. Cause there weren't any podcasts. Uh, but now it's like, now we're, we're nothing Not we're, like we, we have stayed consistent in our numbers basically <laughs> that for, for 12 years. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, now that's a drop in the bucket. Cause now just podcast, like our, but, our big, you know, it was like us, Joe Rogan and like Mark Marin were like all like in new and noteworthy around the same time, which was crazy. I was actually looking up some statistics about podcasts. And if you get more than 500 listeners, you're in like the top 90% of podcasts. Like, and, and if you get over a thousand listeners, which depending on the episode we do, uh, like per episode, it, we, I mean, like, that's like the 99% of podcasts. Most podcasts don't get, have that many listeners. So, I mean, if you look at it from, uh, oh, a macro perspective we're doing pretty good and we are only like one point of contact away from if we took this more seriously like you know eating wings on air and stuff like you know that, you know we're we're one we're one hot wing away from like you know I, and that's isn't that like the american thing right like like we can almost be rich kind of a <laughs> yeah it's the it's the american dream that, that that if you just work hard enough you'll be at rich which is a lie uh because you have to be born rich uh and be given all of your wealth and that's the only reason why people are rich but but we lie to each other and say that like oh you just got to work harder work harder work harder but you know what i really like is like the the fact that um, I can go, my, my favorite part about doing the podcasting stuff is I can go to basically any country and just have like a buddy or fixer there and, and like, just be like, Hey, I'm, I'm going here and kind of like look around, poke around with people that I've met and have somebody that can show me around whether it's, you know, and, and I think that's been the most valuable thing, but what about you? Like what's gotten yeah, you how started? Do you, uh, how do you give started podcasts? I think, I think mine follows the same story is how i got started with wow radio because i didn't have a cell phone for the longest time and then i ended up getting uh my parents bought me a flip phone and then i worked my way up because they're like we're not paying for texts so i ended up getting like an iphone but i'd also gotten an ipod touch back in college so for a while i was like yeah maybe i'll start downloading like what's out there and kind of just to follow joe's joe's lead i was like I'm going to look at what World of Warcraft is uh, for podcasts. And that's where I found about radio. And then I remember they were doing the, the whole, hey, if you're interested, send in something. And I know I've always brought up the fact that uh, Rob and I never took the idea seriously about getting on there. Like, we were like, this would be really cool. 
we probably won't get it. We're not going to take it seriously, but we're going to try to go for it anyway. I remember and like yours, your, like we, I remember that audition process because like we got submitted a bunch of, a bunch of stuff and most of it was hot garbage. But, but I remember Slanik was like, do you hear these, because yours was a parody of Octail and Hordak. And yeah, he's like, hey, these fucking guys. Octail and Warslack. Yeah, it, 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 are literally just making fun of it. And they're, they're like, honestly though, they're probably pretty good. We should probably get them. But like, he's like, get that doing that made you stand out of the crowd. And, that was and funny. It, like, it was that part of like taking it seriously because of the content that was in there, but also not taking it seriously because we we couldn't take it. We just couldn't take it seriously. We didn't want to go in with like, we're going to present like blah, 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 blah. We're just like, we're going to kind of go with the flow and see what happens. And like, why not try to rip it off? Because worst case scenario, uh, they just say it was too ridiculous and they don't. They don't call us back. But so. like, you make yeah, it, yeah. I, I remember like, I remember being like, I wasn't like a decision maker during that, but I was like, a, like people talked to me because people do. But like, I remember that process of like, when that happens, like something like that, like you're like, this person has personality. And that's all you're looking for in those auditions. You're not looking for the mo like the best information about World of Work. You're looking like, does this person seem like they have their shit together and have an interesting personality that I want to listen to more of what they're saying. And, and I think that was the big driving factor for like when I listened to Octail and Hordak back in the day, like it definitely had that wrestling vibe to me in the sense that like they don't necessarily always have to believe what they're saying, but they're saying it very charismatically so that you kind of you're buying into it regardless of whether or not they believe it because they're selling it to you in a really like a really uh, interesting way. And so I, I always liked that kind of wrestling feel from Octail and Hornack that they were able to cover things. And I know that we tried it in, in Warcraft Anonymous. I tried it once and I couldn't because I ended up reneging on everything that I had said because I was like, I can't, I can't stand behind what I'm saying because I don't believe in what I'm saying. But I did feel like to Octail. To argue, yeah, to argue the other point and make it entertaining like that. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were both a masterclass at it, so. I'm going I'm to go That's ahead and, and hit the next wing. So yeah. wait, are you going up a spice level here? Because you said you ate a well, second wing in our chat here. So I, what, I know, but I think on? you guys had seven total, right? Each of you, Joe, you yeah. have. Yeah, but I don't need to eat the exact same. I just want to make sure I'm at the same spice level. Yeah, are we okay. going up spice? Yeah, we, we're going uh, up a spicy level. So I'm thinking we're going to go up a spicy level, eat two, and then uh, I'm going to top out with uh, three on the hottest for me. So that'll okay, be seven. Okay. Yeah, whatever. All right, let's spice <laughs> it up. Spice it up. All right, I'm going to watch you guys eat, and then I'll cover you guys eat. I'll do the play-by-play -play while you guys take bites. For me. All right. So Eric's going mango hob, which is my spiciest. So he's like a man of great taste. And Ike's jumping in here. What does he have going on? Oh, he's just slamming into that one. Wow. Sweet and sour. Spicy sweet, sweet and sour. sour. So, mm. so there you go. All right. They look like they're they're enjoying it. Eric, you've, you're a fan of the mango habanero. You, it's you, nice. It's nice. Right? This is the second time I've had it. Last week, I, I got the same order of Atomic and Mango Habanero. I actually went down. I went Atomic first and then Mango, but the Mango's good. It's got a really nice heat a, on it. Do you need a paper towel, Eric? Like, I, you got to come I, prepared to these I, things. I okay. know. You think, you think I, don't, I don't bring a bunch of napkins? You were just you sitting there with your no hands. Problem? I was worried you're going to, like, touch your eyes or something. I, listen, I know what I'm doing. That's why I'm sticking with my right hand for touching wings, and my left hand doesn't touch the wings. The left hand is for touching other stuff. Yeah. Your know, left hand's always free for things. Uh, like, how is your wing experience over there? Mango hot like is a sweet... solid. It's a solid. It's a it's a good, good higher end one. Like it's got a nice. It's not over. It's not overwhelming. But I I, I tend to eat spicier foods than your average white. So uh, it's good. It's good. I like it. All right. All so right. I, so I think I had the 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 I had the order correct, but I had the flavor wrong. the The first one was sweet and sour with some spice and that was pretty good um like i said it, it was a little bit more than a buffalo sauce um this one's a honey sriracha and i gotta say like i i took a first bite and was eating a little bit of it and i was actually unimpressed by the heat because it wasn't even hitting the last wing but you gotta remember sriracha is all about the back end and so i i'm starting to Sweat a little bit. This one, this one definitely kicked in after the fact. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm from Los Angeles. We put sriracha on our breakfast cereal, so that's just how. <laughs> so I never thought sriracha was like hot. When I, whenever I have it, it's not. It's, it's not crazy. Like, more of like it's, a sweet, it, like tangy almost. It's mm. yeah. It's not. It's not crazy hot sauce, but it's like, it's like the the standard starter for most most things like here. It's like, if you have hot sauce, it's either like it's either 
that or I uh, mean, it depends on the restaurant too. But yeah. we've got the. Oh I well, gonna I was going to say, say yeah. go for it, Joe. No, nope, okay, I mean... no, I mean you were talking about hot, hot sauce it. stuff. <laughs> You're talking about hot sauce, hot sauce, and I was like, you know, like there's Frank's and that other brand that starts with a T that gets put on everything, and like I thought that yeah. was like the standard issue. Like, yeah, this I mean, is, Frank's okay, is this good. Is your first I would say, step into yeah, hot. Frank's, Frank's, uh, and then what is it, uh, Tapatio, are are just slightly under Sriracha in the Scoville scale, and and that's the heat index. But also, the heat index is bullshit. It doesn't actually measure anything. So, I think technically Sriracha is like slightly better, but they're all they're basically around the same rung of the ladder. The so other, what? The other thing I'll say with the, the ones that I have are the, the, the first ones that were sweet and sour didn't, like they had a burn, but they didn't have much flavor to them. It was like eating just a, a spicy wing with no flavor. So you just get a lot of kind of chicken. This honey one was like, ooh, honey up front. That was pretty good. And then the burn in the back. So this one's definitely more flavorful than the first one. That's how I felt about the mango hop. It's like, it's like real sweet up front. And you're like, that's good. That's good. And then you feel like that heat in the back. You're like, ooh, I like that. So I actually like, so the first one was a, a wet Parmesan like thing. And the second one here is, is a dry, a dry rub Buffalo. And it, it's, it was like going into my mouth. It reminded me of like a hot campfire kind of feeling like, you know, like if you're in like a, a arid climate and you're by a campfire that kind of like you breathe in and it kind of takes your breath away a little bit. Like it, it kind of was like that, but also it was a lot better than the first one. Like the first one, the primary sensory feeling was just salt this one was like salt and then it's like okay here's some like gentle sizzle and like you were talking about the back of the tongue being activated like like i I can feel that now just kind of swirling around not so bad so buffalo wild wings has an okay buffalo flavor which good (laughs) now how do you feel about the dry rub itself like Ah. i prefer saucy stuff but because I feel like, especially from Buffalo Wild Wings, it always seems like they made the wing, or in this case, your chicken nugget, and then like they like just shook on the powder, and it's not really a rub. It's more of like we've doused it in some kind of powder and then served it up to you. And that's what I'm saying. Like it's actually very sad. Oh God, my autofocus. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's good. Like, it, it, yeah, it, it looks like a chicken nugget that they put powder on, and they didn't really yeah, it, dry. It's not really a rub. And that's what I'm saying. Like I, I, I don't subscribe to the way they they did this and i pictured it differently in my head and i'm disappointed because i feel like the bone-in ones would have been a better choice yeah i don't know how they their, their process but in wing stop they just have these giant bowls so they will fill them with the the chicken and then, and then shit, they, like yeah. physically do that whether whatever the sauce is no these guys it's just like one guy it's just like just <laughs> not it's not even not even a little bit just yeah so yeah i took this the one with the most rubbing compound and and ate that one first and it was it was all right. Like if I ate it, I wouldn't be offended by the flavor like I was with the first one. I'm like, you call this Parmesan and garlic? Get out of here. Like this is salt. Get out of here. Salt and pepper. That's the flavor of the first one. So yeah, no, that's pretty good. I haven't had to like just like drink my ranch or blue cheese, but I am nervous about the 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 next step. But is your question? Are your questions going to get harder, Ike? Are you following other? I don't know about. I don't know about things? harder. No, I'm not. I'm not following other internet people but I, I i like to dive into people's backgrounds and that's why i really enjoy um interview type questions so i guess my next one for for the both of you and and it's this is weird for for me sitting here thinking like what do i know about eric and what do i know about joe i feel like there's a lot of answers from joe on this next one that i'm gonna like i'm like that makes sense but i'm actually kind of curious if i'm gonna find something out about you joe that i didn't know whereas eric i don't feel like i i know a whole lot about in this realm that i'm about to ask about and i'm thinking i'm gonna learn something new well I know at least you I'm know i'm learn. i'm not the youngest that i'm <laughs> the oldest in my family unlike joe i know that that's why you showed Oops. up to my wedding um yeah. so <laughs> the the question for the both of you is um if if covid weren't a factor and money wasn't a factor what would you do right now not where would you go? Like, I'm not talking about, I mean, maybe it's traveling, but like, wh- what, would you, what would you do to keep yourself busy? What, is, what would be the optimal? Like, Joe, you have all of these podcast ideas in the past. Is that a direction you would want, you know, if money was an issue, would you try to consolidate and make something out of that? Or wh- what would you guys do if money wasn't an issue and COVID weren't, weren't a problem right like, now? Like, not an issue forever? Like, you yeah, just no, you, you, are, you are again? set for life that you don't have to worry about money. So you have, you have entrepreneurial drive to do whatever you want what would you do oh my gosh that's a 
huge question that you know what's really weird like i have such a hard time with these kind of questions because i've i'm riddled with just the the like the hmm, what am i saying the weight of being an adult like i've lost my ability to dream in a lot of these ways <laughs> and it, it's super sad because like even when i have conversations with other people that are just totally like like somebody linked me to a, a thing where they're like here's like eight houses what one would you live in i'm like the smallest one it's less to clean and also um like you know, like, I, I don't want all I think a lot of that has to, I mean, yeah, there's adultness I, and being being married, but I think having a kid probably changes a lot of your perspectives because, I mean, it's a, it's kind of a joke, but, like, once you have a kid, your life is meaningless. Like, all that matters is making sure your kid comes out yeah. better than you. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's your not hopes, even a your joke. dreams, they don't matter anymore. They don't. They don't matter. Everything just shifts, and, and you're putting all your effort into this, like, little nugget of a human. This, and, and so, like when you when you ask like a loaded question like that i i just maybe take a little too much uh so yeah so eric you answer it first yeah um i'll tell you exactly what i do i don't have a wife i don't have kids i'm alone all the time uh nobody will ever love me so i if i had that good um that good my family used to own an emerald mine in uh in pre apartheid uh south africa um like like some pieces of shit uh, who pretend like they made their self-made um, I would do, I, I think a lot of my day to day would stay the same. I would own a house somewhere with, that would have multiple rooms. So I could have like my own room for streaming. So I could have like a nice setup. I could do like kind of a production thing. I would have like all the production stuff to do the streaming stuff that I do, but be able to do it the best way possible. Uh, but the biggest change would be, I would have somewhere a, uh, probably not maybe on maybe on my property or maybe somewhere else i would have a a um a workshop for uh doing a lot of things but primarily i would love my own blacksmith workshop and just to be able to like just like st start doing because like there's not a lot of opportunity in los angeles there is a place where i can do it and i can like a workshop but it's hard i mean with COVID, i can't but um but like they like you know there's, it's not a very big workshop that they, and you have to pay to do it. So I would, I would love to have a workshop where I could like, you know, just like do some blacksmithing and like, and get better at it. Cause I really enjoy doing it. And it's very fun to work with your hands. It would probably, you know, double as like wood shop, you know, blacksmithing, painting, like any like general, like workspace for like building shit. Like a, like a creative space for, like you said, constructing stuff. Like, but I don't normally when it like I, don't, I never see you create anything with your hands like that like you went to the blacksmith I never had the opportunity thing, but, but like the, so you're like if you had like a little shed would you go be like out there just like clanking the metal pieces together yeah i, I really like it it's very very satisfying that's, there's something so there's cool. something about taking a inflexible piece of metal and heating it to a point where it, you were hitting it with a hammer uh dents it and like you're hitting butter like it's That's it's cool. in, it's insane like when you s realize the power of like being able to like take like a little piece of metal and turn it into something like this like, now was really that cool. one that you made that i was, remember yes yeah. i made this i mean it's it this is the it's uh it's a corkscrew uh but the corkscrew is too thick so it probably will it will not work but like i i did this i i took a a, f a flat piece of metal i split it I extended it. I wrapped it. I made the curls. Like I did all of that. Like I, I made. Where's my doggy bottle opener? That's the one I'm the most pl proud of. The the last thing I made. Uh, like look at that. That's cool. Yeah, that's exactly. That's really cool. It's I took <laughs> I took I took a piece of metal and I I heated it up in a fire and I turned it into a bottle opener with a dog face on it. Like it's it, it's like it's something. It's you're like this is it, it's it's so fun. It's so fun and so satisfying. <laughs> And I, I really do enjoy blacksmithing because it's it's an art that is always on the verge of dying because cause so much of it was taught word of mouth to apprentices. So so much of that knowledge disappeared when when uh, when when factories showed up and, and automation started and like industrial the turn of the century and the industrial revolution killed a lot of blacksmithing so a lot of it is is people just trying to rediscover how to do half this like we'll look at swords and be like I, we do, really don't know how they made this so we have to just so this is people in their sheds just banging away at metal rediscovering how to make stuff with blacksmithing and it's great and if there's an apocalypse i can make swords and, and so this is exactly what i expected from eric like 
there was something I definitely learned something about you. I know that you've done it before, and I know that you enjoyed it. I really like working it was with the my level hands. that you were like, I would want it in my yeah. backyard, and I think that's super awesome. But the the art teacher in me too wants to be like, now that I know you have this creative like side to you, I want to see more. Like I want to, and it doesn't right. necessarily for to, me. It doesn't yeah, have I to love, be just metal stuff. I like I, I love yeah. to see. I love creation. I love it's it's like I that's that's why. Um, uh, when I was doing um, that, the, the, basically the 10 years after high school till I moved to Los Angeles, I didn't have any friends. I didn't go out. I didn't do anything. Uh, and I would get to these points. That's why I started, like, we, I used to do the, the video game reviews on Just Cool Enough because I was like, the, the podcast, we'd been doing it for a few years. I was like, this was scratching my creativity itch, but now I'm just showing up and talking. This is not creative enough. I need to do something. Like, I always need to be working on something and creating things. Otherwise, I just, I, I don't know what it is. It's just like some, I just feel, I get depressed and I feel bad if I'm not actively like making art in some capacity, whatever guess, it is. I guess I shouldn't even say that I, I, I didn't think about the creative side. I guess, the, again, the art teacher in me thinks visually like you made something, but you've also written books in the past yeah it's not it's yeah. not necessarily always been about drawing or, or creating in the sense of you have yeah. a physical like, i can't draw object. i wish i could that's my biggest regret uh is that i don't have the ability to draw i could get like i could get better at if i practiced you know it is it is a skill that one can get better at if they take the time i'm lazy but um but yeah i like i, I just like creating in every capacity whatever it is whether it's writing whether it's acting improv uh blacksmithing you know it's it's just something it's i like doing art there's i just need I have a physical need to do it. I can't explain it, but I just physically feel worse when I go too long without like making things. And, and cool. I feel like Joe might be in a similar vein because there, there's never been a point, Joe, that I haven't known you to have at least 40 different ideas. You may not be acting on them all, but like, and I think that was the biggest shock when we started to kind of close this down the fir for the first season was like, I knew that that wasn't going to scratch an itch for you. I knew you were going to come back to podcasting in some way because I knew that you have a creative outlet that you need and you are not capable of not having 40 ideas. That, that's true. Yeah, I think that's, that's one thing that comes with age and the constraints of time is like you really got to prioritize where you're uh, putting your effort in. But yeah, so for me, it's, it's, it's a difficult question because I'm of two minds of it. Like part of me is like, okay, here's the plan. I'm going to buy seats in the house and the Congress. I'm going to buy just enough to like lock up everything like five or six seats in Congress, maybe 20 seats in the house. And I would just railroad anything I want, stop legislation or get legislation going through. But my 20 people would be bought and paid for. That's what I would do. And I would fix things for, for America. But, uh, so yeah, that would be my big picture thing. Uh, you know, like, and I mean, if I could buy everybody, I would, and just like pull the strings behind the scenes. That's what I do. But anyway, so like unlimited money, yeah, unlimited someone, funds, a, a, a rich oligarch with unlimited funds paying in, uh, the American legislator to push through their own ideas and agendas. That, that, that sounds so far-fetched. <laughs> yeah, that, that could never happen. So, so yeah, but because we know that is impossible to happen, um, I would pro like what I what I would want to do is honestly is I just want to go to a place that is calm and I want to go do racing every once in a while so like yeah, I'm building this out but like creatively I'm kind of already doing it <laughs> so like this is the thing like I I I love team sports I love building and interacting with people and talking with people I guess if I had unlimited budget uh, the Joe Q car show would be bigger than, uh, yeah, you would pay Fresh someone to take... market it. You would, you, yeah. would, you could pay the it advertising. Would be, you would, it would push be it like, out. Exactly. Like, cause Cause what, but like, it, like what are things that like are things that you want to try? Like, cause this is something I just remembered. I, I would love to learn to fly, but that costs, that's a rich yeah. people thing. I, I will never have enough money to, to, to get a, like a pilot's side. Cause it's like, I, I, it, I disagree with that. My, my cousin from the backwoods of, of New Hampshire, who has no money to his name, got his pilot's license. Okay. And now he owns so, a two little prop plane that he flies yeah, around. Maybe, the maybe it could like, it, maybe in the city, it's harder to find. I was uh, going to say LA yeah. makes it tougher because everything mm -hmm. there is so inflated Possible. for rich people, but you can go, you can go be a crop duster around here or yeah. like in the Midwest somewhere. I if think you really it, yeah, I think it would be fun. It would be fun to fly. Although having said that, um, I am a middling at best driver 
and small <laughs> aircraft have a terrible safety record. So I don't think I should fly because I'm I'm just kind of okay at driving. Uh, you know, I'm I'm fine. I'm not great. I'm okay. Um, One thing. But- one thing I would absolutely do if I actually had, like, if I didn't have to have a 40 hour work week and I, the Joe Q car show was big and it was scratching that itch. The next thing I would absolutely do would, uh, I, I would, I would be learning how to play funky ass instruments like guitars. And I would start with the keyboard because I have some background in it. I'm not good at it, but every time I pick up a keyboard, I can make a melody. And, and uh, I, music was such a big part of my life that I've taken and I have not engaged with in a very Same. long time. And That's I my biggest very, regret. Is it, that, is, uh, it is. I, I, I played the trumpet in, in junior high for three years. Uh, I was able to pick up the saxophone pretty easily and learned it in a month because I already played the trumpet. I could read music. And I just completely forgot how to do any of that stuff. See, and that's the thing for me, I, I, in all the classes and everything I took, I didn't even care about me- reading music because I was always able to just pick up something and just string things together in a really cohesive way that, that sounded good. I, I, I feel like there's some untapped creative juices there that I really need to engage with. And I'm kind of like, maybe I'll just save it up to like when I'm like old and decrepit to like keep my brain cells alive. I'm like, I'm going to learn music now <laughs> or something like that. But like, I, I, well, even, like, my, the little my ch- children are away at college and getting married married uh <laughs> I, my, my wife's left me 17 years ago and i'm alone in this house might as well pick up the old piano <laughs> yeah and then it's just as much as you kind of joke and laugh about it, like i remember being in college in my undergrad and and being in figure drawing class with people who were 65 and older like they opted to take the class just because yeah. they wanted the experience and they're like I'm retired. I got nothing better to do. And this seems really interesting. And I wanted to try it. So I showed up and I took the class. And I'm like, that's really cool. Like, I'll probably end up doing something like that. Like, there's, yeah. there's so many like things that just lead to an enriching life. And I find that the more that I learn, like the, 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 more I have an appreciation for other things. It's, it's so, you know, like you, you start, like I started learning more Italian and then I'm like, oh, wow, there's so many similarities, similarities between English, Italian, German, French, like, and you really can start like Those picking them languages. apart. Yeah. Right. So like it, it, there's, there's, and so I'm like, oh, this word comes from here and you can just, I, and I feel like the same thing is with, with music. You're like, oh, wow, that, that tone that's happening, like it's used all the time here, here, and here, and it produces this emotion. And I, that's why I really love the amount of emotion and feeling that a good song, you know, like how many things actually like you can listen to two minutes of and like well up or, or just be so excited by or, or just have an emotion. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it is, is our, our, our tied to memories and stuff like that. Cause I can't, I can't listen to, to, uh, there's a song from Avatar: The Last Airbender where one of where the the, the voice actor who plays uh, General Iroh sings uh, a song called uh, "Leaves in the Wind," and it's like it, it, it's it's like maybe like 20 seconds of him. He's not very good at it, but it's the emotional thing of like the 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 emotional arc of that episode and also the emotional arc of that was the last recording of that voice actor before he passed away that was the last time he was so it's like the double like emotional value of that i can't hear that without like welling up yeah and and that's what i'm saying like the what what a song captures is so special and to the point where if I'm in like an argument with somebody or I'm having like really bad feels at something, I turn off the radio because I don't want a music. I don't want a song to be sullied by a bad memory. Even if it's a sad song, I don't want it to be associated with that because for me, for me, and I think for everybody, it's just, I think it's ingrained in humanity, like a beat, a muse, a a melody, a chord. It just, it all plays on a, on a primal level. So, well, right. it's funny. It's it's fun. Oh, sorry. I, no, go ahead. I, was, I just was going to say it's funny how like because we all have like certain songs and certain sounds sound a certain way. But that's because of his our history of like where those were played. Like the only reason why like uh, like the Imperial March sounds as menacing as it is, is because of, you know, a hundred years of, of people writing music that way has, has inferred it. So we assume it's like, if we decided that that was a funeral march instead, you know, 200 years ago, then that song would sound weird. Like, why is it a you, song about death? Like, it's you so want to know. So this is, this is actually, here's a weird one. Like my, one of my favorite things to do once in a while, like when I'm celebrating is to play the, German national anthem and then the Italian national anthem because 
when I was a child, there was a famous race car driver called Michael Schumacher. And at the end of the race, after he won, they would play the constructors of the cars or they would play the, the driver's national anthem, then the, the constructor's national anthem of the vehicle. And it, so it would be his national anthem, Michael Schumacher's national anthem, the German national anthem, and then it would go into the Italian national anthem. And I just thought it was the most, it's like that song, both of those things played together in succession. Uh, I, I, like, it, it is just like, I am elated when I hear those things. And uh, it, even when I'm excited now, like I'll, I'll like run around and like, like hum those in my head. Uh, because because of that and it's just tied to these childhood memories and uh yeah so like uh, that, that that's my spotify mix just those two national anthems <laughs> if you want, go, go check it out <laughs> I, you're rich now what do you do um do you do? so so part of me is like in the past uh has been like you know i could i could be retire and be okay if i had like the money i could just sit here and play video games but to be honest like that doesn't appeal to me i think i would it would be something i could see myself doing kind of like for a summer break as a teacher where you're like oh I've been playing a lot of video games lately. I enjoy it. I don't know that I could, if you gave me the next six months off and told me I could not, I didn't have to work, even even that, I would be like, I couldn't play video games at all. But um, I, I think for me, it, and it falls in the same categories that you guys were talking about, that like I have a creative itch. I really wanted to be a music teacher uh, back in high school, and I still do. Uh, and I love being an art teacher, don't get me wrong, but I've always had the goal in my head to go back and get my music ed degree so I could also be a music teacher. And uh, I think that would be something I'd want to do. I'd also want to continue teaching art. I don't know that I would want to continue teaching art in a public school versus like starting my own art school or doing private tutoring. I enjoy fostering and, and uh, having conversations with people about creativity <clears throat> because I like to see where, where it goes for them because I find it very inspiring for myself. And just, I also enjoy seeing that light bulb go off. Um, you know, and I think that that goes back to kind of what Eric was saying about like wanting to work with his hands and with metal. Like I'm, I would want to be there and witness this and kind of watch Eric go through that process because I find it super fascinating um, because everyone approaches creativity a different way. Um, I know that it's cliche that I would want to travel, but I'd want to travel for the same purposes. Like going to Australia was like going into a Discovery Channel show. And you're like, yeah, this, and people, and then, you know, the next year my wife and I went to Italy and people are like, oh, which one would you like better? It's like, you're, you're comparing apples to oranges because right. going to Italy is like, I'm going on a history channel show going to <laughs> Australia is I'm going on a nature channel show and you can't compare the two um, to each other. And so having those experiences and just seeing how other people, how other cultures live is also really appealing to me. It also um, matters like who you're traveling with. Cause like, yeah. you know, I went to Paris with my mom and that was, yeah. And, and I like, I went through Europe with a friend and I was like, yeah, this is like, you know, we're traveling. We're like, it's like a nice, uh, it's like a travel documentary. But when I went to Japan with, with Joe, it was, it was less a travel documentary and more like a, like, like, uh, like a, like a, a screwball comedy of like, <laughs> like just like a bunch of like, like, uh, look, a bunch of white people stuck in Japan for a week. See, and like <laughs> Japan's on my bucket list for two reasons. I want to see the current culture. And I feel like that's kind of where you guys are coming from. Like you got into that, but I also find the architecture and history and, and art to be fascinating out of Japan. Yeah. And I it, would definitely want to go dude, back the and woodworking. And see oh my that God, stuff. dude, you see the that's, joints in the woodworking in Japan. And it's just like, Oh my, I, I think about it literally. I'm not saying figuratively. I'm saying literally, I think about the woodworking in Japan every day, every day. Cause you're surrounded by, fittings and wood and i just look at it i'm like this is shit like go to japan look at what they do with their wood like well go do ikea oh you're like fuck that <laughs> yeah. well no I, I appreciate the, the the engineering that goes into making yeah. and, and distributing but, ikea furniture but yeah like, it's just like uh the craftsmanship for so much of like there's so it's much pride functional yeah, so. and it's uh formal looking whereas ikea is more functional i feel and, like, and mass produced and stuff. There's, there's, just, there's still like a lot of bespoke mm. stuff in Japan. I feel like uh, when it comes to handcrafted things, there's, they, they're keeping a lot of those traditions alive. It's so weird. We all, we all mentioned music. So like, are we going to start a band now? <laughs> Maybe this whole time we just should have been like a, a band, not a podcast. Yeah. And <laughs> I thought about like, uh, I saw it because there's a game, Rocksmith, which you can get for the computer that is actually... Uh, what I hear a pretty good uh, guitar trainer and then like uh, somebody mentioned uh, that they actually sell strings that are colored like the rock uh like color like versions so I was like oh hell yeah I, I might I might buy those and then like like do that because that would make it a lot easier to learn that would be cool that would be really cool 
I, I, I see the Rocksmith thing. And then I always get the ad, like the, my Instagram ads are always filled with like, learn this piano with this app, just hook it up to your phone. Your phone's a piano. I'm like, no, I want like a real one. I want one with like really good weighted keys and like, well, they have, stuff. you can buy, like I have, I have a keyboard and you can buy, um, or actually I think it's free. There, there were apps that, that will listen, that use your microphone that listen to the tone. So you can ha- set up the app and it'll be like, play this and you do. And then like, it will be like, yep, those are the right notes or those aren't yeah, the right I, notes. I, I need to get like a decent keyboard and, and really play around with it. Cause like even playing with my kids stuff, like I, I'm just like having so much fun, like making tunes and making little jingles and like, just like singing to my kid and just, it, it's just hilarious. It's so the, much fun. The guitar that came with, um, what is it? Rock band claims that, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty small comparative to a full keyboard, but like they did claim that it's one of the few instruments in that game that can actually teach you how to play it. Like, yeah, I think clearly not going to learn the, the guitar, but the drums and the keyboard yeah, are definitely cause, things. Cause the drums is just a drum kit. Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> And and so I've been I've been like oh, it's been sitting there. I I disconnected my Xbox 360, but I've been always kind of like maybe I'll because I like I mean guitar. I mean a piano can lead to a lot of like at least knowledge about music and music theory. That it. I think so. Yeah, I I, I really would like to take a listen more music theory classes. Yeah. All right, what are we doing next? Are we ready? Well, we gonna I step just, it up here? I just realized that also they gave me four atomic wings, so I got one extra uh, wing. So I'm excited about that. But well, what are we staring down the barrel at right now? We got I, my hottest. I'm, this I is my hottest too. I bought three, four dozen wings in the other room because they were like, you oh, know, the best way to get four, four flavors is by buying a dozen a piece. So I was like, shit, let's do it. So <laughs> I mean, I have a, sh- I have a ton in the other room, so I put four of each. But what, how many left do you got, Joe? What are we looking at? I, I mean, I have, I have four wings left, but I'm, I'm only eating like one at a time. I'm not like mm. sitting here having a meal. Yeah. So I'm, I'm I doing got, it for the flavor. I got four. I've only got one flavor, but four of them. All right. So we got the. Eric's got the hottest left. I can let's make go the hottest, hottest happen. And yeah, Joe, let's do right. it. So, We're going hottest. So I'll, I can I can go for this one, Joe. If you want to try it out, we'll let, we'll I'll, I'll okay, talk. Okay. You eat. Okay. Because we got we got two mango habaneros coming in here. And, okay, and I I'm gonna I'm gonna I got my milk jug ready. Here we go. This saucy. Eric, oh boy! Eric just put it down like it was nothing. Joe, Joe's going full bore here. Okay. A, this is pun- punching me with flavor right now. <laughs> has, has it started to clear out your sinuses? Eric, again, looks like he's unfazed by... It's coming. I mean, this is the Atomic. Um, although that one was dried out a little bit because they've been sitting here for a while. Oh, yeah, but the, the back end of that heat is when it really starts to, to get you. But yeah, now, is, the, is the I'll Atomic right one there just straight heat? Like, are you just eating a really spicy... Or does it? Is there any flavor? Um, yeah, so, I mean, there's flavor. It's like, it's very tangy. Right. Um, I don't know. I feel like these ones are not as bad as last week's. <laughs> so this mango habanero one that I'm having is currently making my tongue feel a little numb. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is actually the hottest I would go and still be able to, like, enjoy. But I wouldn't eat this with people. Like I would eat this alone somewhere and just be like, oh yeah, I feel like some spicy food. That's <laughs> I it get is that because but I like hurting me. <laughs> yeah, today was the second time I had the mango habanero, and I think that's gonna be my go-to flavor from now on. I think I, I'm a little sweaty because of this, and I'm going to drink the milk. But like, I I, I just kind of want the flavor to sit there. It's good, like especially the the wet the wetness and then the. Uh, the 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 it started out like with a real good punch of flavor and now it's coming into that nice like burny aftertaste yeah. so i don't know i don't know it kind of reminds is. me of like thai food but yeah. it's it's spicy man i'm struggling through these words i had to get yeah i had to get i'd eat three of the four because i don't know if they were just not as sauced as usual now i'm starting to now i'm really feeling it which is great. yeah like um you're, so you're in mango habanero did you i i didn't notice very much mango flavor with it uh, no, it was just like a sweetness when I when I did it. Yeah, and I think that's nice because like the sweetness, like it's like a little like garnish. It's like, hey, this isn't gonna be that bad. And then like you take a couple bites and you sit there and you're like, why okay. am I salivating so much? Kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the atomic took it. It took a. It took a while. It took. It took the long route to get here, but it's getting there. Little, it's not. A little crazy. sweaty. A little sweaty because of this. Yeah. One. I'm, but getting, I, I'm getting sweaty. I'm I this would last not be one able because because why not? Let's let's fucking party. I guess I, 
I can go back to the Buffalo and see if that even phases me now. But this mango habanero is pretty good. Actually, I kind of rate it the highest out of all the ones I've tasted so far from Buffalo Wild Wings. But like I said, I would not enjoy eating this with other people. I, I only would enjoy eating this like, like I'm going to go, I'm going to put out all the Star Wars movies, order some mango habanero, get a jug of milk, and, you know, that's what I'm going to do for the weekend kind of a thing. <laughs> But I'm going to have this milk, and then I'm going to go back to the buffalo and then go back up to the uh, mango habanero. So, uh, yeah, Mike, I how are you like... feeling over there? Uh, mm. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> God, Ike, Ike's face is all red. Yeah, he's, are he's you been okay? Losing it. He's been losing it while we've been talking. Holy oh, shit. God. Oh, God. Yeah. Mike, are you okay? You're disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> You're fading into the blackness. <laughs> Uh, I pinned I pinned you right here because I wanted to show off your the red on your face like you're feeling it in a big way. Talk yeah. us through it. Uh, let us ride your wing home. Let's yeah. Go, how, yeah. Don't, don't don't rob us of this experience. He's robbing us of this experience because he I'm can't not, talk us too hot. Oh. So, I've eaten the the triple X spicy sauce from uh, Hot Ones. <laughs> And, like, that's nice because it's got some flavor to it. And, like, you basically, and I'm pretty sure this is what's going to happen with this, you got to, after you eat, like, a small bit of the Hot Ones stuff, you have to devote the next eight hours of your life. No, no, like, the next eight minutes of your life to, holy shit. Oh, my God, Ike. You got to devote the next eight minutes of your life to, like, dealing with the heat. And so most people that I've seen of, like, eating this stuff, like, putting their mouth under, like, a, a tap water and chugging a gallon of milk this one is very mustardy to start off with this is uh this is their hell's bells flavor and uh I, when i first took a bite of it it was very mustardy i was like oh this is actually like a pretty decent flavor there was no burn on it i was like this is really nice i ate half the wing and that's when the heat started to kick in so i ate the rest of the wing uh and by the time i was done with it like i don't want to touch my eyes my entire yeah, mouth don't. around the outside because i had like wiped the like all of this out here around my mouth is now on fire. Um, it's starting to come down though pretty quick. It still kind of burns out on my face, but like my mouth, I had some milk starting to calm down. So I'm not as impressed with like the heat level is there. Definitely got my eyes watering a little bit. <laughs> definitely sweating a lot more than I was. The heat but level's like, there. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I enjoyed the, the hot one sauce a bit more because I had more flavor. Um, this is more. This is definitely more just about the heat, but the heat dies off fast. So, like, I could yeah. another one in a second. Um, going through the same experience, but it's going to be over fairly quickly. Not that I'm saying I. I guess if you're a masochist, you're like, yeah, just keep it, keep it going. But like, this is not I going to be memorable. The, and, and that's the thing. Like, wings are good for like just having that like kick of spice and then like letting it burn down for a little while. If you get really spicy uh indian or thai food and you just have to like sit there and eat like a whole like spicy that dish was, you're just like oh, oh my god i'm that burning was, alive like, i remember we were talking i think it was on this show once like we were talking about like like spicy thai food i was like oh i never get spice and i was like okay so we i we ordered like a couple of days later we ordered pad thai and i was like i'm just gonna get like level one whatever the basic like most mild version of spice and it wasn't too much but i was like holy crap this is your basic this is your white people spice? Okay, yeah. fuck. Yeah, You're playing at, at a different level. At, at, at Thai, Thai restaurants and authentic Indian restaurants, I, I'll say like medium. And then like that usually beats my pants like pretty bad. And I'm like, okay, I should have done like mild plus or something. Or like, like just like, yeah. So like I, I always talk to the people. I'm like, okay, like what's like your white person flavor? And they're like, that's, oh, that's low. And then I'm like, okay, low plus. That's what I want. Did I tell this know? last week? Uh, we were uh, after the board and barrel the board game show i do with my buddies kyle dustin and eric um we went out when we did it one of one of the last times we did it in physical proximity we went out to this chicken restaurant near eric's house and they only had like four flavors but they were like crazy levels so i went with like the middle one and like the guy was immediately i i don't know this is kind of like you know this level i like like a ghost pepper level i was like okay maybe i'll back it down and i kind of wish i went for it but like um like Kyle has a mustache, and he was like, I'll have the most mild you've got. And he's like, really? I was ex with that mustache? Okay. Um, 
Remember then Eric went, he's like, give me the best you got. And he was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, but like, yeah. So it depends on the place. But I will say, yeah, the Atomic, I don't know. It felt not as hot this week as it did last week, but um, maybe that's because I- your taste buds off last week. I was going to say, your taste buds are just growing up. I think some of it is because I built up. I built up, whereas last week I started up and went down. Uh, But- yeah, I but also maybe they like dried out a little bit so they weren't as hot. But like, yeah, it took it took like I it wasn't until I was on the third one that that I was like, okay, now I'm really start now it's really coming. Like it it took the long way around, uh, and it, it stuck around for a while. Uh, but, but it was nice. And I, I'll I'll agree. I just went from having the hottest one that I had to the mildest one that I had. And like the mild one, I'm like, there's no heat to this anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't right. know if it's just because I still can't feel my mouth from the hot one yeah. that I ate. But like, I was like, oh, this is I, actually a pleasant. The habanero one that I had, I just, I dipped a uh, buffalo in a sauce. I can't tell. I can't tell what sauce it is. It's just like sloppy sauce in my mouth. So like, I don't know what it is. It is like, I mean, the Wingstop trick, like you get ranch or whatever, and you dip it, it does, it will cut it down a little bit and like dilute it a little bit if you want to go that route. Because it gets rid of the capsaicin. But yeah, yeah. Like I because I want to feel this habanero one again because I'm like sitting there staring at it. And it was kind of delicious. So like I might. I honestly wish I, I had more mango again. habanero. Like well, that, that's going to be my go-to flavor from now on. I'm like, these so are if, great. But, but I'm not, I would not eat it on a date unless it was like a spicy hot date. I don't know. I don't know about dates. But like I, I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't eat <laughs> you don't it. You don't go on dates. You haven't been on yeah. a date in a decade. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So like even saying that, I was like, what an idiot. Shut up, Joe. But yeah, so like I, I wouldn't eat this like at a business meeting <laughs> like i want to be like oh man okay so for q2 uh, yeah, yeah you know just like we're going to be planning these launches <sighs> and then like you know like you gotta like today's yeah, a good day i don't have a bunch of stuff coming yeah. yeah i don't have a bunch of stuff coming out of my nose today but i did have to wipe a little bit so like yeah do you have more questions like i mean i, I can keep going i always have plenty of questions but i i, I was gonna say joe do you want to you were looking at the mango habanero one I think Eric just polished off all the atomic ones from what I could just tell. Well, yeah, that, that mango habanero was my hottest. I just so, had it. So, like, so I, I was going to say, do you want to do another hot one? Eric's already okay. finished his. I will okay. eat one. Uh, you can eat one. And uh, in the meantime, um, Eric, what has been, uh, and there might not be any, what has been the most memorable part about just doing Just Cool Enough in the last 12 years? And episode 27 doesn't count. The, okay. Um, I would say it's um, the coolest thing um, is probably uh, I, it's a, almost a tie between your wedding, Ike, uh, which was great, but not enough time. And also a really weird time in my life because my dad had died three months before. So I so but like going to Japan with Joe, like like literally just just like like I he was like he's like, I'm going to Japan. And I was like, oh, man, I wish I could go. And he was like, fucking come with us. I was like, I can do, I have a job now. I can do that. I have some money, not much, but some, and I fucking did it. Uh, and, and, and it was, it was just so, it, cause it was, cause I did like four months earlier, I went to Paris for the first time with my mom, which was the first time, you know, I, I'd done any traveling. I was like, I definitely want to do more traveling. And then Joe was like, let's fucking go to, let's go to Japan. I was like, yeah. And then I like getting to experience Japan. Like it, it was my first trip as an adult that was like not with a parent. Not that like going to Paris with my mom was a bad thing, or I didn't have a, an amazing. Well, it's time. not like a chaperone versus yeah. going as a peer. Yeah, but but even even when you're an adult going with your parents, there's it's still different. you're still there with your parents. But this was right. this is me going with with friends with people my age and like like not worrying about like i mean i i i love going to museums and shit too but it's like not having to be like oh i don't know like like when uh me and atish had a day where it was just me and him and and we were walking and he's like you want to go to the robot restaurant i was like fuck yeah i want to go to the robot restaurant and so we 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 went to the robot it was expensive it was like 80 dollars a person or whatever stupid like like overpriced thing uh you know but like yeah we watched that stupid robot show it was it was delightful (laughs) It was great. And I was like, yeah, fucking I, we can do whatever we want. You, you say that. And like, also that, that trip was kind of cool for me. Cause I was like, I can go on trips with other people. Like Sarah and I traveled a bunch and went to different places. And I felt like, I felt like I was like such a cool guy. Like, oh man, we got all these, different, you know, we're traveling around. We're a bunch of people like experiencing things. Like this must be what, what it would be to, if, if I had unlimited money, you know, like I can go do this kind of a thing like this and that Japan trip. 
is easily like that was when I turned 30. Um, and so like I turned 30 in a capsule hotel like that. That's easily the like one of the best memories in my life is, yeah. is that entire trip. It was, and, yeah, it was the, it, it was, I, one of the happy, it was funny. Cause like it was, I was on the verge of my biggest depressive episode I've ever been through. Uh, but, but that trip like held, like held off to like it, that trip was so great. It held off that crippling depression for like three months. But the other thing is, yeah, that kind of sucks. Like the, the Ike's wedding, I mean, you had, you have kind of like these terrible things happen and then you, you like these terrible lows and these amazing highs, highs are happening. Yeah. Like, is, is that strategic by you, Eric, or is it just no. happenstance? No, it just, it just dumb yeah, luck. He actually murdered his father and then decided to go on the Japan trip. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. That, no, that way he could experience that low and then hit that high. No, afterwards. the Japan trip, the Japan trip was when I lost my job and the girl I really liked oh. broke up with me over Facebook at, at two in the morning. Uh, but uh, no, yeah, it's, it, I think it, also, I think the problem with the wedding, it would have been a lot more fun if I had, uh, I didn't have much money. So I didn't have the time to like, like go there. Like I basically, I flew in, rented a car. Uh, you know, I didn't rent a hotel because uh, I flew, I was flying out at like 6 a.m. So I literally flew in, drove to your place, um, like went to the wedding and then like, and drove to the airport, slept in the, the lobby because they didn't. It was such a tiny airport; they didn't even open yet. I just sleep in the lobby, and then and then got on my plane and flew home. So I didn't have like time to enjoy it. Like that's that's the, been the biggest. It's nice to have the money. Like that was like I think that time of my life. There was a couple of trips like that that, that were like especially like wedding trips. Like I, my my buddy Eric's uh, wedding in, in New York was the same. It was flew in, uh, stay overnight, and leave the next day. Like like now that I have a little bit more money, but not much i can like make a thing of things like that like one of my biggest regret was uh when i went to um my buddy went, uh, eric's wedding in new york is that i didn't he was in upstate new york and i'd never been to uh, manhattan or new york city uh and as i was flying home i had a layover in newark and i could see the city from the from the airplane i was like fuck if I, I just wish I had another day or two to just go there because it's right. I can see it right now. That's, I can see the Statue of Liberty from the plane, but I still didn't get like. So now that I'm an adult, I'm and with a little bit more money and spending cash, I can be like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go somewhere. I'm gonna enjoy it a little bit and not just try and get the cheapest like flight in and out. You know. I I would say I mean. If I if I didn't include the two of you in the memory. Like if I have several, kind of like you guys were saying. So I think there was one that was stood out for me that had nothing to do with you guys. And that was just, I remember Amanda coming back from school one day and somehow had brought up to one of her students or came out with one of her students that their, her student listened to Just Cool Enough. And it was kind of weird because it's one of those like, it, it starts to make it real because you're like, oh, there's people out there that listen to us. And it's like seven degrees of Kevin Bacon in a way that they're, you know, relatively close. It's not one of these thousand or whatever downloads that we get of our show that you're like oh it's just a number yeah, it, like like even though it's like it, you'll get an email or somebody will show up mm -hmm. in my twitch chat or whatever and you're like but that's just that's still just you know words on thing it's in a discord whatever but it's like that's a physical real person like and and so that, that stood out to me but i also have to say like on the flip side it's definitely having the two of you come for my wedding and for me it's it's going to see joe and i think when the two of you came to my wedding the the it's still weird going through that feeling that I had back in, in, in WC radio. And it's like, these are people that I've listened to for a long time. And I don't even just mean on this show, but kind of that starstruck, like they're here. And it's really cool for me to have you guys show up to stuff. Cause I, it's the weirdest it's as much thing. as that we talk every, every week at the same time, it's like, Oh man, but like they're here. It's not yeah, just and me looking at a screen. It's so weird. Like, yeah. Cause you, you like every time we've met up in person, it's it's you're like what's this gonna be like but you're like oh know, it's exactly right? the same it's <laughs> nothing has changed it's exactly like we were were in a, a, a in ventrilo or we're playing world of warcraft or whatever and whatever it's the like that we have the same shorthand it's not any different we're not different people when we're in, in See, together in real life it's so I, weird i i take a i'm gonna i'm gonna say that i i disagree with you i think uh, with my experiences with Joe, Joe is always what you see is what you get, both on the internet and in person. With Eric, in person is a lot more reserved than 
I Eric perform. Hey, I'm talking more like when we're not like doing a podcast, when we're just like talking, like if you call me on the phone or if we're like playing a video game and not streaming it. Uh, I feel I, like I, it, I would yeah. agree. I think Eric's like super thoughtful and I don't know if that like comes off in your like anxiety ridden like persona you like to put out here but like the, the thoughtfulness of what you what you put out into the the, the world is noticeable. It's all a clever ruse to trick people into liking me. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Isn't that weird how humans do that? Yeah because I'm a yes. psychopath. <laughs> no we're all psychopaths he, that's the thing you gotta get out of your head about that but yeah like it's it's crazy like when when you think about you know i've spent a third of my life with you guys right like i collectively uh you know we we to, you know we've we've done hundred maybe even thousands of hours of content together at this point and uh i i just when you know we okay eric and i said the trip but i think when all three of us are together at at your wedding night i think that was like so cool and especially your buddy who took amazing photography matt norris mm -hmm. I, I remember the name because he took amazing pictures of us like those pictures pop up every once in a while on my chromecast and it stops me every time i'm like man like that was such a good like just what a great moment yeah. in in my life I still uh, regret it, that I miss Eric rolling up in the carpet upstairs, but <laughs> at least there was that video. I but it was see. your wedding, and they yeah. and all the all, all the, everyone stole the cupcakes, uh, so you had to, a lot to deal with. Uh, that was so <laughs> insane when people just start grabbing them. Like they haven't even given the bride and groom their fucking cake. Don't grab a cupcake. What that was really bad you? etiquette. I can't believe yeah, someone. What did is that. wrong with your your? And like I don't know. And we we got enough cupcakes <laughs> for like everyone to have like one. Yeah. And then like the first few people who went and just grabbed them, grabbed like four. And so thankfully, like the people that were catering grabbed two of each kind for me and Amanda so that at the end of the <laughs> night when we went to the hotel, they're like, hey, we boxed up some food and we boxed up four cupcakes for you because we didn't get to eat any of the cupcakes and we didn't get to eat the cake that we cut. Because um, all the people you invited are animals. <laughs> and yeah, and I was like, oh man, nobody even like told people like, I'm glad people like the cupcakes so much. But they were like, really good. They didn't even get a chance to tell people like, now you can have cupcakes. It was just like, oh, yeah, no, they, 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 they were out there and people just fucking went for it. They went to town. It was crazy. But yeah, it's believe... weird. It's weird how much like uh, when you when you know somebody so well for online and then the transition to, to real like uh, Dustin, Eric and Kyle, uh, who I've mentioned several times already. Um, when I moved to Los Angeles uh, eight or nine years ago, like Kyle and Eric both lived here. Uh, and and I knew them from online. Now they're they're some of my best real life friends. Um, and and we haven't had to because of COVID, we don't get to see each other uh, in person anymore. But like like the transition from like internet friend to real life friend was so easy to slip into, and so much so that like Dustin, who was their friend from growing up, only moved down to Los Angeles like a year ago. But I forget that he hasn't been with us this entire time. Like it, like, and like, it, it's like so weird, like, cause we're so close. Like they'll talk about high school with me as if I went to school with them. Isn't I was like, bitch, weird. I didn't grow up in Kansas. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> it is weird how that happens though. Cause like even uh, when I met uh, Brady over in Ohio, he was passing through going to some, other content creators like event and he's like ah, i'll stop off and talk to joe and it was just like such an interesting thing and uh because i got to meet him in person uh, you know we exchanged phone numbers and everything i know that he's been out there and he has this like daily garf cast and i've become really good friends with him and i was sitting here talking to him on like google duo and he's like and i was like hey what do you think i should do with the joe q car patreon and like what you know just talk bouncing ideas and he's like wow, this is weird. You know, like, and, and I was like, it is kind of weird, right? Like, um, we're just like, now we're buddies because we've known each other for so long. And, you know, he, he was just an email. He was just like a text. And, you know, it turned into this real person for me because I met him in real life and, uh, and you know, an, a, another lifelong friend. So I think, I think uh, wings bring you together. I think that's the moral of the story. <laughs> Well, and I think uh, we should also stop jerking each other off and start plugging to each other. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, finally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, especially because it's like the, the, the hot sauce on our hands, you don't want to touch your genitals at that point. Um, <laughs> so you touch other people's. Yeah. Oh, Let them deal with it. <laughs> That's the really ticket. weird. Uh, really, really weird. <laughs> I, my plug for this week is a thing that I only found out about Wednesday night when hanging out with friends. Uh, it's a, a series of shorts on YouTube. 
that I can't, um, I don't understand how I'd never watched it until literally two days ago. Uh, but it's a YouTube channel called Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Uh, I, I think you're going to love these. Uh, there, there's <laughs> only six episodes currently, uh, and they're all about like five to eight minutes. So you can watch the whole thing in half an hour. And it's, I don't want to give, I don't want to talk too much about it because it's, it's just, you, you have to experience it really. But it's, it's kind of like a, a children's puppet show, but it gets dark. And that's all I'm going to say. And it's, mm. it, I, I, it's really, it's so, it's so good. It's so smart. Like I was so blown away by it. I've watched it twice all the way through already. And I'm probably going to watch it again right now when we stop doing this. It is so, it's like, it, I watched it and I was like, this is, this is so good. <laughs> Wow. I, I, I'm interested in this now, too. Uh, my plug for this week is... Wait, hold on. So it's a puppet show? It's like a, yes. it's like a it, Sesame it, Street... It's, it's like a Sesame Q. Street kind of... Uh, it's like a Sesame Street tile, style, you know, like there's, two, like there's three main characters. Two of them are puppets, and one of them's a man in a suit who's kind of like mm -hmm. a nondescript person monster thingy uh but yeah uh and you know it's that's so, i, I is it just like watch the it. dark crystal like thing, no it... no no okay just watch all it right. okay i'll just watch it the all first right. one's a great nothing. introductory uh it's the it's the first one it, yeah it if you don't like it the first one's uh three minutes and 25 seconds so You'll, give it three you... give it three minutes and 25 seconds if you don't like it then great but if you do <laughs> It's there's only six more and you, you you're you're almost there. Okay, good. Uh, my plug for this week is the Joe Hukar show with Kaywin, uh, aka Key Lime. Uh, she came on the show and honestly, I have never had this much good. Even when Tavarish was on the show, like I got good feedback because people were like, like, oh, wow, you got Tavarish. But you know, and, and they said some other interesting things in the comments. But like, I released this episode and people are texting me that don't normally listen that are just like this episode is awesome like wow i got i i'm taking away like lessons like kaywin has lived a life like she's moved 10 times she's beat the odds when it comes to health stuff she's an amazing person and yeah, I her and I she, had... uh, she she like came to Los Angeles she's like yeah i'm visiting Los Angeles like she was going to stay here for a couple of days and then go uh somewhere else um yeah she did that she, in Boston too. She came here for well, there was a con going on. She was like, "Oh, I'm gonna be for for." Dude, I think she, it was. I was like, "Yeah, let's she meet up to, at like Cheesecake Factory." She went to Los Angeles and was like, "Oh man, you know, I always wanted to work for that company and like applied for a job on vacation." Like, you gotta go. Just go listen to the interview. There's so many facets of her life uh, that will inspire you, but also just listening to somebody else's story i think is really helpful she, she and you seem to also have common commonalities in the sense that like eric had pointed out last show that like you are willing to take the shoddy regardless because and things tend to work out for you but you're you're never afraid to put out there she seemed like she's in the same boat like she wasn't afraid yeah. she's like i'm gonna try this and like she was just like passing it, through and then got a job yeah like and that's what i'm saying like she is an amazing character and the the interview like the interview is like an hour almost it's 56 minutes and it feels like it's a 20 minute interview like it just goes by so quick between her and i the conversation i i cannot i cannot recommend this one enough i think it is the best interview that i've done so far and she is definitely the best guest like as far as what she was talking about she was so real so definitely go check it out uh kaywin is very much appreciated and uh so yeah joe q car show google it and find the kwood episode and like subscribe do the comment thing you know that whole thing is this on youtube this is going to be on youtube hey if you're watching this video like comment subscribe ring the bell do the thumbs up and share with your friends the just cool enough channel <laughs> maybe we'll come out with more stuff if this does okay <laughs> like what's your plug um, mine's, I, I suppose, a bit elitist because I know some people would have a problem not wanting to throw money at this, but, uh, it's, it's a show on Apple Plus, on Apple TV Plus. Um, it's called Central Park. It's put, uh, out by the guys who did Bob's Burgers. Um, and it's about a family, a multi a biracial family who lives in New York City in Central Park. Um, and the father is a, uh, a park, uh, ranger. And it's the whole, the whole series is a musical. So each each episode's like a half hour, twenty minutes long, and everything. There's three, at least three, 
three musical pieces in each show. And I got to say, uh, it's got some great stuff. Um, I know that the, the daughter is biracial because it's a white mother, black father. Um, it's currently voiced by Kristen Bell, but she said she doesn't want to renew it because she feels like somebody of the appropriate race should be playing the character in the future. But in terms of like the music, I love it. My wife's kind of on the fence about it because she's like, it's really hard to follow. This is a story because it's an animated musical that's not like Disney. But I love the music. And I, I put a link in our in our Zoom group here to uh, one of my favorite songs called Weirdo, Weirdos. Uh, and I feel like I could identify that, especially with uh, with the song when I was in high school and college. <laughs> wow. Well, um, I think that that's a wrap, man. Like we we got all saucy on this episode, and yeah. even maybe you got a little teary eyed because we got some. It was just because we got like. Yeah, it was hard pretending to eat hot wings. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, okay, t- cut that out. Cut that out, editor. <laughs> cut that out. Uh, These all digital just, wings. Yeah, the digital just, wings. Yeah, it wasn't. I was just eating. I dyed them greens, and then I green screened it in <laughs> wings. We we actually just yeah, just green screen nuggets. <laughs> just, uh, Oh my gosh. Oh, Thanks yeah. for listening, everybody. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Oh, we were, we were going to get to the emails, but we didn't have time to see <laughs> Email the show.